after you make your account at SageMath and log in, you'll be presented with this screen here. In particular, you'll see the big new project blue button right there. And what you should do is if the first time you're logging in, you won't see any project listed in this area right here. So just click the big blue project button there, new project button, and just create some project. Give it some name and some description if you want. It can be anything you want. We've already created one here called physics, and so we're going to use that one. But in general, after that big window we used went away, whatever project you start there, you'll see it listed in this list here. So we'll just click our project called physics. And you, sh you should think of projects much like a folder on your computer. It just contains all of your work. In this case, our work will be pertaining to physics. We don't see any files here because it's a brand new project, but we're being invited to create or import a file, a worksheet, a terminal, or a directory. So we'll go ahead and click that. And we'll give it some name up here like intro. And for our purposes, we're always going to be interested in Sage worksheets. Those are the ones that I also do some computer math. So if I start a Sage worksheet, you see here's our blank screen, and this is the one that will allow us to start doing some math. So let's just start then. First thing is that we can, of course, add a couple numbers together, two plus two, and after a line is done, it turns out return isn't what you want to use. You want to use shift return. It's very common in these math packages here to use shift return to mean actually go and do the evaluation. Uh, what's the difference between that and return? Well, if you just use return, you can do like one plus one and five divided by three, and 8.2 squared if you want. Now, I pressed return after each one of these individual lines. Now, if I hit shift return, it evaluate all three of them for me. So see, the return allows you to create some sub results, but you always have to hit shift return in order to actually get the computer to do the evaluation. So we can just proceed then with a whole bunch of different things here. Um, just to review the basic symbols, of course, we know that the divide symbol is the slash like that. We know that the multiplication symbol is always the star. And you have to remember to put the star in. The computer won't do that for you here. And the caret is used for x raising things to a power. There's 5 squared to be 25 right there. And scientific notation, which always sort of throws people here, can be done with this e notation. So the e means times 10 to this. So there's 1,000 right there. And 9e9, there's a constant from electricity and magnetism, the 9 times 10 to the 9th. So scientific notation is very easy to put in. And if you want to express something like a nanocoulomb charge, you can do 1.0 e minus 9 right there. You, you, you can put in a minus sign for the exponent to mean something times 10 to the negative power there. So that's how we put in some basic numbers here. And of course, we can go ahead and put in a version of Coulomb's law. There's 9 e 9 times 10 e minus 9 times 5 e minus 9. So what I put in here is the top of Coulomb's law. There's k right there. There's Q1, 10 nanocoulombs. There's Q2, 5 nanocoulombs. And if I divide by something like 0.1 squared, hit shift return, that'll be the force between a 10 nanocoulomb charge, a 5 nanocoulomb charge separated by a distance of 10 centimeters or 0.1 meters. So we're able to do basic calculations fairly easily, much in the same way they'd be done on your calculator, but we have the convenience of the nice big screen, the keyboard, and the easy editing. For instance, if I wanted to go back and reinvestigate this force here, not for a 10 and a 5 nanocoulomb charge, but maybe between a 10 and 15, I just put a 1 right in there, hit shift return, and my result is back again.